And officials raided a migrant hideout in Tripoli on Tuesday and detained alleged members of a ring responsible for smuggling illegal migrants from Libya to Europe. 163 migrants were also arrested. European Union border agency Frontex has, uh, says for the first nine months of 2015, a total of 129,000 migrants, many of them from Eritrea, arrived in Italy. VOS Nicolas Pignon visited one camp in Rome and sent us this report. This camp behind Tiburtina Station opened in June this year. It can accommodate more than 200 migrants at one time. The Italian Red Cross offers food, temporary shelter, and tries to make it as comfortable as possible for the migrants. Having left everything behind, these migrants usually stay in the camp for a few days before continuing their journey in the hope to reach their dream destination, Sweden or from? Germany. They come from Eritrea, Sudan, Gambia or Mali. Mali In Mali, there is no solution there. We prefer, we prefer crossing the sea than staying there. Personally, I think it's better to cross besides the risks. I took all the risks to come here. More than 130,000 migrants have arrived in Italy so far this year. As thousands continue streaming in, some Italians are eager to help them. They generously bring clothes or toys for the kids in the camp. First, that's uh, the least we could do. We don't need it. It's uh, superficial. There is a huge humanitarian crisis and we can't be indifferent to that. There are two other unofficial camps established in Rome. Migrants, however, see this as a temporary solution and try to leave as soon as they can. Now, winter is coming in a few weeks and many do not want to be stuck in a shelter struggling with bad weather. It's very difficult to live here. You see, this European is very cold and uh, I think uh, now it's winter here. So they're going to change. They tell us we're going to change because we never survive here. NGOs and those helping the migrants hope the European governments will find a sustainable solution to solve this migrant crisis. From Rome, Nico Pino, Voice of America. Now, viewers, Nicolas Pinot joins us live via Skype from Calais in France, uh, where he is today. Nico, welcome to Africa 54. How are you doing, Vincent? I'm fine. Now, tell us, uh, you know, one of the things I noted from your report is that uh, Europeans are generally uh, very hospitable and generous to these migrants. Is that what you're hearing from most of the migrants who are arriving? Yeah, because many European people, they, you feel for these people, they know that uh, in these kind of countries like Syria or Eritrea or Iraq, uh, it's not that easy. And people, uh, they will say that uh, if I was in that situation with my family, I would do the same. And you have to remember that uh, many European countries, they um, knew the war back in the 40s, 50s, and many people, they have to uh, flee their house. So uh, many people, they relate to their stories. But on the other side, like right now where I am in Calais, uh, many people still uh, think that there is a kind of a deterioration of the economic situation with migrants staying here, like in the city of Calais. So they have mixed feelings about that, um, Vincent. Now, yeah. now, what are the migrants telling you in terms of their uh, concerns? I mean, they have seen people die trying to get to Europe. They've seen people live in misery. What makes them still believe that they can make it and they can have a life in Europe. But simply because they still think that Europe is going to be a better place than their own countries. If you take, for example, Eritrea, Gambia or Mali, people, they will tell you they're not happy there. So they still want to take the risk and cross the Mediterranean Sea. But um, I was really um, shocked by the testimonies, uh, people crossing the Sahara, uh, smugglers, traffickers, very violent. Uh, some of them uh, were burnt, for example, by their smugglers. So it's not an easy journey. And even when they make it to Europe uh, safely, uh, with the European vessels uh, rescuing them in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, you know, that's not the end of their journey. I mean, they will have to go, for example, to Germany or Sweden, and it's a long way to go there. They have no money, so um, it's not very, very easy for them. And even it's if tough. they arrive in Europe, yeah. it's very tough, Vincent. How is the situation in France and in Calais where you are today? So, Calais, you have this famous, notorious jungle, 
where you have right now 4,000 migrants waiting to cross uh, for the channel or with the train uh, every day. Uh, it's kind of a game with the policemen because they're trying to board some trucks. Uh, was go we're going to go into the channel. Um, and right now, it was raining today. Um, winter is coming. It's very difficult to live uh, in tents, uh, in shelters. Um, obviously, you have the solidarity and many uh, people here, they're providing food, they're providing clothes, but um, all the migrants, they're very concerned that winter is coming where they are near the beach. Um, it's not a great place to it's live, uh, especially yeah. for those uh, yeah. who have children, for example. Well, we really feel for them. Thanks a lot, uh, Nico, for your excellent reporting from, Ro uh, from Rome and Calais in France. Thank you for having me. Nicolas uh, Pignot uh, reporting live uh, via Skype from Calais in France. Now,